Hello there, my beautiful book lovers. My name is Kimia, and welcome to my book talk. So I am a big fan of retellings, and especially when it comes to mythology and Greek mythology. So anytime that I hear there's a good retelling up there, I try my best to read it as soon as I can. And so when I heard that there is this series that it's about Hades and Persephone, a retelling of their stories, I was very excited, especially because there was a lot of good reviews out there on like Book Talk and like Bookstagram and all of those places about this series. I was very interested. And even though it's actually not a very recent sort of a series. The last book it's sort of recent. Um, it took me a while to get to eventually this retelling and I hated it so much. It was just the worst and I have to stress this very much so that this is my opinion. So if you read this series and you enjoyed it and loved it, honestly, good for you because that's a whole point of books that like, you know, they're out there for people to read, to enjoy them. And it's really based on like experience and your personal preference. So sometimes you hate a book that another person loved and another person hated and you loved it. And there's not any like a right or wrong answer most of the time. So I don't want to say just because I really hated this book, it means that like the series that it was just not for everyone. Some people enjoyed it, but Dear God, it was one of those moments that like, I really question why I trust people when it comes to book recommendation, which is such an irony for me having this like channel and like recommend books for me to like question why I trust people with it. But anyway, it, it, it was just like, horrible. And I like to usually only recommend books more than like really just rant about books that I didn't like. But there are some books that I feel they deserve it simply because of the like the uh, all the praise that they got when they really didn't deserve it and there are like much better retellings out there that deserve the praise so anyway i was just like so disappointed i hated it so much and um you might ask yourself well kimia why didn't you just stop by the like the first book and just like you know was like this is not for me and move on with your life a fair question but i have issues when i start a series nine out of 10, I have to finish the series. Like I should like really, really hate the first book to like completely drop the series altogether, which like, I don't even remember have ever happened. And even with this series, the first book was okay. Like I, I could see it becoming a very good, decent series. So that was the reason I was like, I'm going to give it a chance. But then from book two and three and four, it was just no. And I spent so many hours because I was listening to the audiobook. And so I wasted it so many hours that I feel like I deserve to make this video and just have a rant session with all of you guys about this horrible series because dear God. So let's let's start very easy and like very simple. So um, this book, as I mentioned, it's about Persephone and Hades. And if you don't know, like the main, um, like the myth, it's about Hades, which is the god of underworld. And he's one of the like the main three gods, which is Zeus, Poseidon and Hades. And um, Hades, because it's in the underworld and like, you know, everything is like dead there. Um, he's like, you know what? I don't like this. I want some sort of a like a life for this like underworld, my um, sort of like land and everything. And then um, Persephone being the goddess of spring. And also she's very beautiful, obviously. And like, you know, she's the goddess. Um, Hades is like, you know what? I'm gonna kidnap her, I'm gonna take her to Underworld, and I'm gonna make her my queen, and then like, you know, there's going to be some sort of like life into the Underworld and all of that. And then Demeter, um, Persephone's mother, uh, who is the goddess of harvest, she is, well, obviously very sad and frustrated, and so she's like, you know what, I'm not going to have it. I'm going to stop with all the like the harvest and everything. And that's how we have like fall and winter because like, you know, the like the, like, the entire planet is just dying. And Zeus is like, my brother, <laughs> we need to give Persephone back because everything is dying and we cannot have that. And Hades being uh, like one of the main gods, um, he's like, I don't wanna. And so they sort of like compromise with like six months, um, Persephone will be underground and like in the, like the, in the main world. And so that's when we have like spring and summer 
and then six months she is in the underworld with Hades that's when we have fall and winter so that's the, that that's the main story and it's a very interesting story you know when it comes to like myth and so I was very excited about that and with this sort of retelling we are having this world uh, sort of in a modern um, society and world that it's sort of happening which is okay like you know like with retellings if you're going to build a world that's totally fine if you're going to do it right by all means do it but then there's this thing um, Persephone is this new goddess in this retelling and she's a new goddess that Demeter has been hiding from all the other gods and she also doesn't have her powers really yet and she's not really able to like create life and like like you know with plants and flowers or anything she cannot really do it but then we have spring right in this world spring happens and the thing is, all the other gods that are in this world have their own power and they're doing things. And then there's this question that if um, we have the goddess of spring that no other god or goddesses knows about, and yet we have spring, but Persephone doesn't have her power, so how do we have spring? And how does this work that they don't know about her? but she doesn't have her powers, but we have a spring, you see? And like, we will be like, okay, I'm, I'm thinking about this too much. And like, let's like, it, it's not about that. It's about the love, the romance. Sure, let's move to the romance. So <laughs> with the romance, um, the thing is, honestly, in, even in my opinion, Hades is the, like between the, like the three gods, the main gods, is the most redeemable, in a sense, like, don't get me wrong, all the gods, they're horrible. Like, if you have read any of the, like, the Greek mythology, you know, they're just the worst. But Hades, at least compared to, like, Zeus and Poseidon, dear God, like, Zeus is just no, and Poseidon is a very close second. So, like, Hades, at least, it's a little bit, like, mellow. And so I, I could see him being a redeemable character in a retelling. So I was very excited. That was one of the main reasons that I was very excited to see him as this like great character that we can get to know and sort of root for him. So I was just going all for that. But then in this series, he's just like the most typical gray character that is just like this hot, wealthy dude that is like misunderstood and he has a, like a heart of gold and he's doing like nice thing on the side without anybody knowing and he doesn't want anybody to know and also he doesn't care about other people's opinion so he's letting all of these like negative things being said about him but at the same time when people are judging him for being a like a shitty guy that he's portraying he gets mad that like why do you think i'm shitty i'm doing like nice thing so like you know the most typical like like the most annoyingly typical sort of a, like a great character and then on the side we have Persephone that like in this retelling as I mentioned she's a, like a new sort of a goddess that has in the first book this sort of a, a, like a toxic relationship with her mother because Demeter is like this very controlling goddess that especially since like um, none of the other gods and her goddesses knows about Persephone she's very protective she wants to protect her child from all the rest and that's a reason that like she's very controlling and so we have this sort of dynamic and Persephone is trying to sort of get out of that and try to find who she is what she's like what she wants to do with her life and that's a reason that she has moved away Away from her mother and like she's studying uh, to become a, a journalist and all of those things so great for her all of that and uh, in the first book we're sort of seeing her um, forming her personality and finding her powers and everything that she really is and then the second books happen and oh my god that book like I, I really wanted to kill myself <laughs> during reading that like so during the second book she turns to this childish, immature, most self-centered, selfish, annoying human being goddess ever that have ever existed because she is so like I get it that when you're in a relationship there are sometimes some insecurity, some stuff that happens. We all as human do have that. So that's fine. But like she is this person that at one sort of the like the part is trying to be this badass, very powerful, like finding her power and like, you know, 
sort of a cool girl that she wants to be and then in the other she's constantly whining about like oh Hades you even though like are like a million billion years old how could you have ever had any other lover and loved another woman and how could you do this and it doesn't matter how much like Hades is like you know what like nothing was really that serious and I have never felt the same like that I feel for you she's like oh no but like how could you it was like so annoying like I, I I couldn't and that's another thing so like if the story it's really about their romance I could not root for these two characters I was so done with them I was like like what is this this is not a good relationship this is not a good sort of a romance that you want to read about like two characters that you're trying to sort of have this story about them to like you know like it was just no and the the thing the other thing like another another thing that about their relationship it was that it was just bad they didn't know how to communicate and they were just acting like children and the thing was like i do not hold anything against smut in the books absolutely not and i knew like what i'm getting myself or i thought i thought what i'm getting my uh, getting myself into when i was like reading this book but the thing is especially from like book like middle of book two and then the rest of the series i swear to god every other scene it's these two just being absolutely super horny and going at it everywhere, anywhere, in any possible scenario that you could ever imagine, no matter how cringy and embarrassing and just horrible it is. And they are like fighting and then they are going at it and they, they're sort of not communicating anything else about their relationship. And then we're supposed to root for them for being a, like a good like a loving sort of, of a, like a couple like you know like I was so sick of it because I was like okay like here's another scene that instead of we seeing these two characters to sort of grow with one another and grow their relationship because at the beginning since Demeter um being so done with all the other gods and especially like Hades uh she tells Persephone that like you know stay away from all of the gods and everything and Persephone is like not sure how to feel and then again like there's all of these like like not rumors but like things that they say about Hades that like you know he makes sort of these deals with the like the mortals and then if they don't make up for it or do it he's going to take their souls so like she is not really seeing him as this like good guy right and so because of that you expect like the relationship when it started it's like very hesitant and like she doesn't know how to feel but then like after like what two chapters everything is like okay I'm sort of going for it and like you know the relationship is just like running towards like being a couple and then after that you don't see them as like really trying to flourish this relationship everything is just told instead of being shown and also it's just like in a most bizarre way again that like everything is just like you feel they are like teenagers you know that like the entire thing about their relationship it's they're like fighting or making out and there's like nothing in between and so it was just like it, it was exhausting and then don't get me started on book three because like <laughs> like after book two we were like okay let's get into book three and um for the book number three the thing is that nothing is happening nothing is happening and again, it's like just like random horny scenes that it's happening between these two. And then like the like last couple of chapters, 10, 20% of the book, everything is happening. There's supposed to be just like huge war and things are just like going at it everywhere. And then it's wrapped up like just like like that. Like you expect this huge war and like all the gods and everything getting involved. But like it gets sort of like resolved in like a couple of pages. And then we have uh, book four that it's a whole other mess because first of all, um, through the like the main three books, also um, there's like I think three other books that are from Hades' point of view, which I'm not going to read. These four were enough, um, but so I'm I'm not really paying attention to any of those things. But um, so like the first 
uh, three books. It's from uh, Persephone's point of view. And there are like here and there sometimes that like you will hear like Hades or like what he's thinking and all of that. But generally it's about Persephone. And then in book four, you have all of these other random character that are like not related in any sense to the main story, to the plot, if there is a plot, because there isn't really. And you get their point of view and perspective. And it's just horrific, especially because like, the, the thing is, they don't add anything to the plot point, they don't add anything to the romance, and they are there to just disturb you, honestly. And I, I just found it so bizarre, and especially because like with the last book, the funny part of it for me, it was that like, again, if we are really looking at this as a, like a romance sort of a series retelling of this book, the fourth book, it's it's like Percy Jackson in a sense, like it's it's no longer about the relationship, but it's about like the gods and like the wars and the stuff that related to them, the relationship things that have, but like relationship as like the gods relationship with one another and things are happening together. And it was just like, what is happening? What's the purpose of this? Like, you know, like you like you like I, I don't get the point of like all of these different sort of plot lines that are coming at you from like different angles that just like why? Why? And and so I'm so just frustrated. Anyway, so it was just like horrible. And I do not understand that why when you pick a story and uh, like let me say this first that I I do not have anything against the author and um she is a lovely author like right there is nothing wrong with that but the thing is to me if you're going to retell a story that is very well known and has enough sort of a plot on its own you have to study and research it enough that if you're going to build a whole new world, then you have to really pay attention to all the elements that are in that story. Or if you're going to just retell that story, but from your sort of interpretation of that, then stay with the main sort of plot line. For example, like um, some of like my favorite, like I, I have talked about this before, but like um, like one of my recent sort of favorite, it's Clemenestra. And that book, it's really like, it, like the story is still happening in the same, uh, like same universe. The only thing is that instead of hearing this um, from the men point of view or Helen, we are hearing it from Clemenestra. And I love that book. That book was one of the best books that I have read. And I like, I, I loved it. And with this book, I could have loved it if it was, again, the same sort of environment, same everything. It was just me really getting the story from Persephone's point of view and seeing her in a sense that like, sure, maybe um, she started to grow some feelings for Hades because she saw that like he was caring about the, all the people that were in the underworld and everything like his kingdom and he was taking care of them and he was paying attention to them. And she started to feel like, you know what, I can live with this and I can't like be a part of it. I would have been fine with that. But the fact that like this story tried to be something new without really thinking it through and then starting sort of small and then going so big to the point that like things are happening just for them to be happening. Like, you know, like for the shock factor and there's like no reason behind them they were not any sort of part of the, any other of the book and that's the thing that like bothered me the most because like you had three books that you have introduced all of these different characters like one here two there like you know or their storylines or anything you didn't do any of those things and then in the last book just for the sake of having things I feel to just like the book being a little bit longer you were just throwing all of these random things at us I was just so unhappy about that and that's how I felt even about their like relationship their romance and the, like the like the sex scenes that was happening to me it felt like it was mostly only for like the book to be like 20 page longer I was like like half of this could have been like completely caught uh, because like it was adding nothing to you and the fact that like with each book the characters were just getting worse and worse because like at the first book 
they were a bit annoying, but you could have seen them as like people that were able to redeem themselves. But then in the second book, Persephone got just super annoying. In the third book, Hades was just the worst. And in the last book, you were like, by that point, don't care about anyone. You're just like, just be done already. And so because of all of that, I read this series, so you don't have to. Because if any of these points makes you to think that you're not going to enjoy it, don't bother. If you really want to read a book that you do not care about any of the characters, you don't want to care about it. You just want the book to just sort of like read it through, enjoy some scenes about it, or some like side characters that they were good, absolutely go for it, by all means. Even though like there are other books that they are shorter, they are a little bit better, but you know, no judgment, go for it. Sometimes even I, like like with shows, sometimes I watch a show just because like, I, don't, I just want to like have a, like a background noise. This is like that. If you want that, go for it. But if like you want a book that the plot makes sense, the world, even if it's not a big world building, but at least it, it has some sort of sense to it. If you want character that redeem themselves in the sense that you want to root for them, especially the main characters by the end of the series, if you want characters that like are related to a plot line and are just not thrown at you, this is not the book for you. The series, absolutely not. Do not read it. There are better retelling out there. And I'm sorry to say this. Um, I, again, I understand as a person that I don't write, but I can imagine uh, or I try to imagine how hard it is to write a book. So, you know, I don't want to judge it. But like some books, I don't know if it was like somebody edited there, somebody would have pointed these things out, somebody would have think it through a little bit better, maybe it would have been better, but it was just a big no for me. And so anyway, I, I, I really needed to just like, you know, rant about this series because I, I couldn't. And I like, I was so disappointed because I trusted um, <laughs> others. And, and, and again, like this was one of the like the fews because like generally I like any time that I have been recommended and like I see a book that it's like very popular and people talk about it, usually it's pretty good. If it's like in a realm that like I like to read about, it has been good. So like this one, I felt so betrayed and especially because it was keep getting worse and worse and worse that I just felt like I can't. And I first thought that I should not talk about it, but then I was like, you know what? No, I'm going to rant because first of all, we have this relationship. Like, you know, sometimes you just need to like rant about a horrible series just to sort of wash it away and move on. And sometimes also like, I, I, as much as I love to recommend books to you, sometimes some books are just so bad that I have to sort of like caution you guys about them. So this was sort of that sort of a video for it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And till the next video, happy reading.